In today's video, find out why many INFJs become scapegoats and why many children become the victims of unhealthy blame or unhealthy responsibility. Personally, I grew up to take on a lot of responsibility in my household early. Because my sister was struggling, I felt the need to socially uh, help out and to put my best foot forward. As a child growing up, I felt like I couldn't take any place, I couldn't make any mess, I couldn't make any mistakes. I had to be perfect and I had to be always positive and I had to always be happy for the sake of other people. Many INFJs have experiences with this need to be socially responsible, the need to take on the feelings of the tribe as your own. Many INFJs might feel drawn to this role of becoming a scapegoat or becoming and taking on blame. It can start out with a healthy desire to just want to be socially responsible, but it can bottle down into something that is unhealthy and slowly damaging to you as an INFJ. So in today's video, I want you to take a look at your personal habits and what you do in your family situation or in your friend circles and how you respond to when people experience shame or guilt or when people struggle. It can be a healthy desire for the INFJ to want to help other people and that is something good and something to feel proud of in yourself. It's good that you want to help and it's good that you want to be there for other people. But growing up you're gonna have to learn how to be there for people in a healthy manner without taking over the agency of the other person. INFJs might feel drawn to take on responsibility and might say it's their fault, might say it's their problem, might say it's their issue even though it's not, even though it's not your fault, even though it's not your problem, even though it's not your issue. And so as an INFJ, I want you to think about this dynamic and how you participate in it. I can't do anything about the fact that other people sometimes place an unhealthy amount of blame on you as an INFJ, regardless of what you do. But I can make you aware of how you participate in it and how you deal with it. When you are socially responsible and when you want to put your best foot forward and many INFJs want to put their best foot forward, want to be good, want to show a nice positive face to the outer world. It's normal to want to also get rid of negative emotion. Other people around you are going to make mistakes, are going to have issues, are going to struggle and as an INFJ to feel other people's emotions as if they are your own, that's difficult, you know. When you know that other people are struggling, when you know that other people have problems, to not engage, to not intervene can be very difficult. So as an INFJ, you have to learn how you can intervene and in what way you can be there for other people. You can't protect other people from the mistakes they're inevitably going to make. You can't shield people from negative emotions or guilt, but you can be mindful of and you can be supportive of and you can provide a listening ear to people who are going through difficult times. And so I want you to recognize in what way you participate in other people's lives. This is also important if you want to make sure that you have mutually beneficial and two-sided relationships. Yeah, if you want the relationship to be both giving to you and to the other person, if you want it to be an equal exchange of energy, them giving you their energy, you giving them your energy, you have to think about in what way you give energy and how you create openness in your communication, how you make sure that your relationship doesn't become codependent. Here, something to think about is, how am I participating in this person? How can I be of help to this person? And here, it's important to recognize that other people sometimes should feel guilty, sometimes should feel blame, sometimes f should feel shame. If another person is feeling shame or is feeling guilty or is feeling pain, that is information. It's information about how they're doing and what they would like to be and who their ideal version of themselves are. And so if you erase that shame or erase that guilt or try to take that away from them, if you try to take away people's anger or frustration or problems, you might keep them from reaching that higher ideal. Instead what you want to do is you want to make them mindful of what they are feeling hey, I see that you're really upset about this. It looks like it's very important for you to be this kind of a person. Hey, I can tell that this is difficult for you. Is there any way I can help or support you through this? Hey, I'm not going to be able to fix this for you, but I'm here to listen if you need a listening ear. These are the kind of ways that you can participate 
as an INFJ. And these are the kind of ways that you can build connections with other people. So in this, you're setting boundaries while at the same time moving boundaries. INFJs, I think, can't help themselves. They want to be good and they want to do the right thing. And I think, like I said, there is nothing wrong with that. It's just about learning how to be truly good, how to be truly healthy in supporting and being there for other people. So keep up being you and keep up doing you in a good way and think about and be, make sure that you never become a scapegoat. Make sure that you never take on too much blame. Make sure that you don't take on too much responsibility. Thank you so much for watching and see you all in the next video.